Yes, 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 it is still Monday, 420, not smoking, even though I'm in Amsterdam. We are continuing with uh, the What Now series. I had a little uh, talk with DJ Abstract earlier, and um, now I'm going back to the regular, regular scheduled program. And my guest tonight will be the great Mark McClive Lowe, and he's just tuning in as well right on time i like people who are on time so i don't have to do this monologue um that i'm really really bad at i've noticed um so i'm um, thank you for being on time <laughs> hi hey how are you i am good thank you so much for wanting to do this no of course um, it's good to chat yeah i honestly have to say that i've been wanting to do an interview with you for so long Never got the chance to, and now this is the first time I'm actually talking to you, so I'm very hey. excited. <laughs> and all it, all it took was a global pandemic. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's because you're always all over the place, and then whenever you're you're actually in my town, then I'm gone, and it's just, you know, sometimes it just happens like that. But um, For sure, for sure. But I've been a huge fan, and I'm just so ecstatic that you're part of, of this little mini-series that I've created out of you know, um, uh, shut down times for creatives. Um, no, I think it's great just to have the conversations going and you yeah, know. it really is. And I, I started it just as a brain fart in the middle of the night and, mm -hmm. you know, talking to friends who are creatives, like, Oh, what are we going to do? And how are we dealing with this? And I, and I heard so many great ideas. I was like, I need to put these ideas out into the world so other people can learn from it. And even for sure. creatives. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, one of the things that I've asked everyone is what the biggest impact has been. Um, I've, you know, I, I talked to you on Facebook when you were actually touring, mm -hmm. um, right before this happened. Yeah. Cause I was traveling myself and we were talking about the, the face masks and, you know, the planes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I definitely wanted to hear your thoughts because you were pretty much all over the place when this all when the shit hits the fan <laughs> yeah i was i was actually in new zealand um at crikey when was it i guess the very end of february february yeah um and then i had to go to to jakarta to play the java jazz fest in, in indonesia then I, then I went back to new zealand before i came back to the states right and um you know new zealand has been really amazing how they've locked us down and taken all the precautions been very ahead of the ahead of the of everyone the, the thing <laughs> um but when, when we went to to jakarta i was there with harvey mason playing um and it was kind of interesting because the you know i had to fly through singapore and all the asian airports had heat sensors everywhere yeah um you know the hotel in jakarta had heat sensors there was hand sanitizer everywhere so there's al already an awareness around it but at the same time at the festival there were thousands of people yeah um and it got to the point where near the end, some of the bands started wearing masks and, you know, we, we were getting a little worried about it. And I think, you know, I think we got back to the States like just in time, you know, I'm, I mean, I'm, I went to New Zealand after that, so it was a week later. Um, but yeah, it wasn't long after that at all that everything started shutting down. Right. I was actually with an uh, amazing sax player, Haley Neiswanger. I was playing with her band in San Francisco at SF Jazz. And we were driving up to San Francisco and we we're about, it's about a six hour drive from LA. So we we're two hours out from San Fran and Gavin Newsom, the California governor was giving a public address. We tuned in and he shut down the whole state. Wow. <laughs> like we're, we're two hours out from San Fran and then Haley gets an email from management saying the gig tonight is canceled. Yeah. Then the gig the next night was, I was going to do my party church in Oakland and that was cancelled and so it's just like suddenly everything, suddenly everything yeah. was gone so we and we pulled over on the side of the freeway middle of nowhere and just like you know let it sink in because yeah. it was and it wasn't just that weekend shows it was you know literally everything got cancelled at once yeah. you know i had i think i had one show left in south africa two weeks later and south africa was good, looking good at the time and then a week later, they closed their border to all travel. So that was gone. And it, it was, I mean, that was, that was the real, that was when it felt real for me, was right. when I lost 
all the work. And I think what's interesting with that too is that the you know, musicians and um, I guess some service industry people and you know, there's a certain demographic of us that lost work first. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Before, before anyone else. I know, yeah. Um, so that's, that was really interesting. And I mean, we ended up just chilling in Sam Fan in Oakland for the weekend and, you know, just, just trying to, trying to act like it, stuff was normal, normal right. for a moment. Right, head around it, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it wasn't until, you know, getting back to LA and then they kind of, um, here in, they, in California, they call it safer safer at home i think the shelter in place policy um so as soon as that was announced then yeah it, it became a whole new ball game but it's been i think one of the one of the best things to be honest for yourself it, personally or in general for me personally is slowing down yeah and you know i i, lo I like to work i love to travel i love to perform and play but you know i do so much of that that I never, I never stop. You know, it's it, like this is <laughs> this is something I hear from pretty much everyone that is doing what you do. Right. Um, you know, they all want to take the time to sit down, but they mm -hmm. don't get that time, and they don't make the time themselves because you have to keep working. You have to um, make your money. You know, and. And they love what they do. Everyone yeah. loves what they do. So you don't want to stop. It's, of course. Um, yeah. It's, 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 it's pretty much the same thing every, every person in your position has said. Um, right. But now but, the question is, okay, you say this is the best thing that happened for you as far as slowing down. So what are you now doing? What are some of the things that make this so great for you other than slowing down? Um. Well, I guess one thing is that when I'm always traveling, it's hard to have a routine. Yeah. Like oftentimes when I'm in LA, I'm eating really well, for example, but on the road, it's not so easy. <laughs> and um, so one thing that's happened is I have a solid morning routine, which is great. Yeah. I've wanted that for a long time. You know, I'll, I'll wake <laughs> up and I'll- I saw you. Know, you. I'll, a little bit of yoga, yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll journal, I'll meditate, I'll do some yoga and you know, some days that might be the most productive thing I do all day, but it's just nice to be able to know that the day is started on the right footing yeah. and that I'm, you know, doing some basic maintenance for myself physically and, and mentally. Um, you know, I, w I was actually early this year, I had some crazy back problems, which came up from, from traveling nonstop and yeah. carry carrying a whole lot of equipment with me everywhere I go. Uh, so that's, I think my body's been appreciating not doing that. <laughs> you know, You're getting a like... little older too. <laughs> oh no, I'm just, I'm, I'm just doing the Benjamin Button, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Your body does not agree. <laughs> but that's real. It's like, you know, when I, 20 years ago, I started yeah. you know, tour, touring internationally. I could, I could do, I could not sleep for four days and oh, be yeah. drunk every we night and it. whatever, you know. But <laughs> obviously as, as the years go on, it's not quite... Um, the same. Not quite the same, yeah. <laughs> so that I've really appreciated that, just slowing down, and and also you know like work, starting to work on 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 work related stuff, but maybe just doing a little bit, just like a. And I sometimes I'll feel like I'm not oh I'm not really being productive, but it's like well we're in the middle of a global pandemic, and yeah. you know it's okay if some days are chill. You know, and that's that's really that's really something that I've been seeing a lot more going around, like the little text message, um, because people are so focused on s staying busy, keeping yeah. you know keeping at it, working, mm -hmm. finding new ways to work, mm -hmm. um, and then there's people that are like, well, I don't need the pressure of having to do something if I come out of this having done nothing. Sure, that's up to everyone. How you deal with this pandemic is, you know, different for everyone. It has a different, takes a different toll uh, mentally on different people. But totally. one of the things that I think is very important is to not get into a rut, not yeah. give up, not fall into mm -hmm. negative mm -hmm. energy, negative thoughts. Because the fact is that a lot of people have lost jobs 
income projects, gigs, whatever. I mean, um, people, a lot of people have lost people, you know? Yeah, people have lost people and, and are still losing people. Yeah. Um, so that's something that we all have to, you know, balance out by also seeing the positive and still focusing on the blessings that may come with this pandemic. Like you said, one of the things is you can rest, you can have a routine, you can be healthy because what are you going to do when you are allowed to travel and do gigs? And are you going to try and stick to somewhat of a routine or, you know, as hard as it is flying all over the world? Totally. I mean, I, I've, you know, I've been touring for 20, literally for 20 years nonstop. Yeah. And for me, part of this is, is like, maybe this is an opportunity to even after this pandemic to, to have a bit, a bit more of a balanced life <laughs> and not, not necessarily be, you know, a slave to the road kind of thing. Right. Um, so I, I see it as a great opportunity as much as there's so much uncertainty around it. Um, you know, I, I know, I know there's a lot of musicians who, who don't have any idea how to, how to diversify this at this point or, yeah. and they're, they're really relying on a return to, normal normal normalcy after normal this. yeah when there may and, not be normal i mean i don't want to be the the pessimist in the room but <laughs> things aren't going to be the same right like <clears throat> you know the the economy the ecosystem of the, the business that i work in you know performing music niche music yeah means that i'm dealing with you know mo for the most part, I'm dealing with, dealing with independent venues, yes. independent promoters. promoters yeah. You know, if they can get sponsorship, that's based on <clears throat> that's based on them getting a lot of people to the to the to the yeah. venues, and all these things are going to change. You know, the the bar staff, the, the the sound engineer, the lighting guy, the support DJs, like a lot of these people, you know, are are finding this time really challenging, and yeah. just they they may have to switch jobs, or I mean. You know, there's some of my favorite venues in the world have been running like kind of GoFundMe crowd kind of crowdfunding campaigns. Yeah, I've seen it too. And yeah. you know, if it's at that point, and we're only one month in, and we don't know when it'll finish. That's kind of that's a sad. lot. Yeah, yeah, it's very sad. It's sad. And, you know, even um, even big festivals are having the same problem. You know, we had um, a big festival over here actually uh, filing for bankruptcy. Really? Because, which one? Yeah. Uh, which one was it? I can't, I can't think of the name. Mm -hmm. I'll look it up for you later. But it's, um, and it actually existed for 12 years already. Yeah, right, and it's, right. It was doing good, but mm -hmm. the way festivals work is they make all of their money in the summer. Mm -hmm. Then they basically don't do anything. <coughs> they use that money for the rest of the year until they can go for the next season. So exactly. if exactly. that's, if that's your, your business model and there is no other way and you are independent, mm -hmm. you don't get subsidies or, you know, um, sponsorships like that, then, then that's, that will, you know, um, become to become a bankruptcy. Like a lot of people were like, already we're only a month in. Yeah. If your whole season is gone and that's your income for the year. Oh, forget it. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's something that people don't, realize uh if you're especially if you're not in the industry if you're totally. like a con consumer and and you have no clue how this mm -hmm. this this business works then yeah it can be shocking um and the same with with in the, like you said independent venues um promoters we all i can't, I can't even live, imagine yeah yeah we have to live off of festival season if this is right before festival season had this thing started in october or something Oh yeah, Maybe we could have, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. we don't. Yeah, you know, and I, I I see some some friends having their tours rescheduled um, to like September October. Yeah, and I mean yeah. that 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 feels a little premature for me. It does. I I see the same thing, and yeah. Yeah, I think even if 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 some countries lift restrictions, I, mean, I don't know if many people are going to want to be out and or want to travel. Yeah, but I'm thinking of the audience as well. It's like yeah. if it's. <clears throat> Yeah, you know, if if it's a if it's a if it's a big show with thousands of people, will people want to be around that many people? Yeah. If it's a if it's a small venue that maybe holds two hundred, 
will people want to be in an, in an unventilated yeah. closed space with yeah. 200 people? It's, you know, I think the, the psych, the, the kind of long-term effects on the psyche for, for as a, as a species, Yeah. not just gigs, obviously, but that's just one example. The, well, a lot of, a lot of things to be different. So I've actually um, been playing um, snitch out here. Mm -hmm. uh, meaning there's the, the weather <laughs> the weather is getting hot over here it's warm mm -hmm. kind of summer like so last weekend and the weekend before people in my street I live in Amsterdam people in my street were throwing backyard parties right barbecue parties which is insane to me in this time where you're supposed to social distance you do you mean with with, with with friends or just with their yeah, households? With, no, not their house. I live in a right. place where you, with two, it's already crowded. So I'm happy right, right, by right, myself. Right, right. So I see all this happening outside from my balcony. Mm. I hear all the music. I, I smell all the barbecues. And I'm like, this is not okay, people. Mm -hmm. Not just because you're you're putting yourself at risk, but people don't understand that, you know, you're infecting other people who are infecting other people who are yeah. taking hospital beds, ventilators, for people that may need it. Yeah. And also you take up hospital staff, so people with other symptoms or illnesses are not being helped and die. Mm -hmm. So just because you want to throw a party, and to me that's, you know, like I said, I'm not necessarily wanting to be a snitch, but it saves lives right now. I'm, I've been calling the police. Police right. are not showing up because they're low on capacity. Right. And so it's just crazy. <clears throat> so on one hand, I feel like, sure, do people want to go to gigs when or festivals or events? Uh, maybe not. But on the other hand, there's a lot of people that don't care at this point. So they probably right. will be, you know, the first audience out there. Yeah, I might, I might, I might let some other, some other musicians and artists test the waters first. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, it's um it's a strange time. Um, I've lost projects. I've lost clients. Um, for sure. But it's also for me uh, to get into what you said about it being a great time for you. For me, I've been probably more creative than I've ever been. That's because great. Because I was in such a like, oh, let's just do this. I was comfortable. And now mm -hmm. I'm being forced mm -hmm. out of my comfort zone. And for some reason, my whole life, it's always been the case. If I have to do something under pressure, I just perform better. Yeah. And so I'm actually happy with all the stuff that I'm getting, you know, done and, and, and accomplishing and new things and, and, and new ways of, of helping artists. And so I'm, I'm very happy. It doesn't necessarily bring me a whole bunch of money, but it is something that can exist after this time as well, next to all the, sure. the regular <clears throat> yeah. streams of income. Yeah, so totally you, agree. Um, I know you, you know, aside from doing your gigs, you just work on music. So is this a time where you feel like you can put more music out, create more music? Um, I mean, I'm not, I'm sure I will, but I haven't been actively making a lot of music. Um, <clears throat> there's, there's three album projects that are all in mixed down and getting ready to come out over the next year. And I, I, I wanted those to come out sooner. I'm not in such a rush now. Right. Um, and I've been, I've been really trying to work to decide, you know, how I want to operate in the digital space. Right. And not rushing into that. You know, I want to be sure about how I'm doing that and sure about what my offering is and how I want to connect with people. Um, so I feel like once I have a better footing with that, then I'll feel more free to be more creative. But I, I do, it was funny when the, you know, when this, when the lockdown first happened, I, I got so many messages from people, some I knew, some I didn't know, just being right. like, oh my, <clears throat> oh my God, you're going to make such amazing music over this time. And it's like, well, that's not the priority. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and that's I mean, good sure, though. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm, there will be some amazing music made through this time by people. And there's always, some amazing music being made by someone, you know, right. irrespective of what the time is. So that's great, but it's not you. But right I think now. that, <laughs> yeah, and it's you know, there's like I said, there's a lot of music in the pipeline, kind of ready to come out. And there's new music I want to make, but yeah, I, I want to look after my own kind of my mental health firstly, yeah, yeah. and 
find my physical balance in this. Um, and yeah, like I mentioned, just understanding how to how to move in the digital space. Right. Because I, I do. For you. Yeah. Yeah. Because I, I, I do think that that is. Yeah. You know, that, well, that, obviously, that's all we have right now. Yeah. Um, but I don't see that changing for a while. And like you just alluded to as well, it's like if I can strengthen myself in that area, if we if and when we do return to normal, it's a, it's a bonus. It's like an extra yeah. an extra strength strength of the bow kind of thing. Exactly. So um, I mean, one thing I have been doing is I've been I've been getting building up my gear for streaming and just like getting getting that set up how I want to have it set up right. basically, um, which is something I've wanted to do for years, but I've never had the the real reason to do it, or maybe I haven't had the time because I've been in between shows. Yeah. But um, you know, I, I I set up all the equipment and I I just thought, well, I'm not going to be using this anywhere else for the foreseeable future, so I might as well set it all up and yeah. You know, go deep. So that's that's been fun. Um, just kind of playing with the technology a bit and trying different things. Yeah. How do you feel about all the live streams from all the DJs? And and is there? <coughs> how do you have a type of feeling about it? Because I hear, oh, it's too much, and oh, everybody this, and oh, it's great. So is there is there I a mean, particular DJ that you happen to see live that you were like, oh, that was dope, or you know, I mean, the D nice is, you know. I mean, look, well, yeah. D-Nice is great because he's like, um, you know, bringing together a lot people. of, yeah, but uh, and a lot of just like everyday people. Yeah. Like it's not some specialist kind of music snob thing. Right. No, everyone's you know, there. Yeah. You know, D-Snob is basically, so D-Nice is basically, <laughs> D-Snob, did, did I say that? D-Nice is basically like turning on the radio. Yeah. You know, you get, you get yeah. to hear all the tunes you want to hear. Yeah. Dang, my, my, there's my son in the chat. Hey, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> um, and so, so I, I, I like what that's what he's doing with that. I don't really check it. Um, Your camera just turned around. So my camera's turned around? Yeah. Let's, let's turn that back. There we go. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Um, and then, you know, I do, I, I'm enjoying like, like Quest Lovers there almost every day, you know, spinning super deep crates. Um, and then Spinner is he's on a lot. Yeah. But I I I do like how, you know, IG Live is kind of like the radio. Yeah. You know, you can you can hear music, you can hear talk, you can hear talk show, you can hear. You can tune like, into what you want. Yeah. Exactly. So I like that, and it's kind of lo-fi um, and simple. Um, you know, that's that that that, that Titty Riley Babyface thing to have half a million people waiting for something to happen. Oh my gosh! It was, was the funniest. <laughs> Funniest thing well, I've, I've the, the, seen the after in... the aftermath was funny. Oh yeah. my god! Because you have to understand, it was three a.m. for me. Oh I wow! I set my alarm. I had like two hours of sleep. Yeah. Because I really wanted to see it, and then I see an hour plus of misery with sound. People <laughs> in the comments were going off. It was. Oh just, my god! It was frustrating because I was like, I'm losing sleep, but then when I woke up. It was the best thing ever. Like right? I didn't know I needed the laughs more than I needed the music because I turned on the music myself. Uh, it was so funny. I'm just I'm gonna set my alarm again tonight. Hopefully they they <laughs> they get it together. But round two, <laughs> round two. But it was just so funny. I can laugh at that three, four, ten years from now probably. Oh yeah, it of course. So funny, all the memes. But you know that yeah. that 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 was a that was a cultural moment, like a yeah. shared cultural moment, yes. which yes. is dope. You know, yes. in in all, in all this, um, you know, isolation, we get to have that kind of thing. Yeah. So I like that. Um, I you know I think that the way Twitch has has kind of crossed over more yeah. more into music now. I think that's great. Um, and of course, there's there's a conversation around well, how do we make money off streaming? Yeah. Because if if this if the stream if streaming is the new venue, then we have to make money. There's no question about it. Yeah, right but, now I see people putting the the tip jar, the the, the cash apps, and the Venmos. And yeah, stuff. and that works. And some people have been doing yeah. shows on um on stageit. dot com yeah. with like like ticketed shows. You know, Badu has her ticketed show. Um, so yeah, I think there's all sorts of different 
ways of doing it, which is no different to the real world. Like yeah. you, know, you have the guy on the, on the corner playing guitar busking. You yeah. have the, the little band in the, in the, in the pub, you know, yeah. getting paid drinks. Then you have the, the performers in the art center with 100 yeah. euro tickets or whatever it might be. Yeah. So, you know, in the real world, that's what happens. And I, and I feel like the digital world is going to, I think it will kind of reflect that as well. I think so too. That's a good comparison uh, to make. Um, I saw somebody like 10 minutes ago asking a question for you about a show, if that was going to be rescheduled. Now, we just already spoke about a lot of people rescheduling their tours to the fall. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's very um, um, optimistic as well. Um, so I'm on the board of a big uh, a popular venue here in Amsterdam, the, the Milky Way. You should, yeah. you should know it. So yeah. it's been interesting being on the board because all the shows are now having to be moved. It's a lot of work. Um, of course. And, and for now, they moved it to the fall. So the fall is mm -hmm. completely fully booked. So if you're a mm -hmm. new artist or an upcoming artist, you don't get any shows until like... For sure. Whenever, because everybody else comes first. Mm -hmm. But even they are saying, well, we have to put a new date and then if that doesn't happen then we'll just move it again hmm. um so how are you with your dates that you had to move how is that going for you um i had my south africa show that happened right as the shutdown happened um that got rescheduled to late september um very optimistic <laughs> very, very optimistic um, great if it happens by all means but great yeah. but yeah um, I had a I had a June Europe tour planned, and I, one of the promoters emailed me this morning and said, you know, have you thought more about fall, about the autumn? Um, and I, I I don't know, like the in, in my calendar, I've like left some dates penciled in for early November in Europe, okay. which I still don't think is going to happen. Right. You know, I I would love it to happen, but I'm pretty much presuming that. 2020 is a wrap it's done yeah it's it's done yeah so so for me if i can yeah focus on building in the digital space that's what i'll drop on my energy yeah um and then you know i was also touring i mean we mentioned it earlier but it was a bit crazy like i, yeah. I mean th this time last year i was in japan i did like a i did nine shows no, seven shows in nine days in seven cities wow by myself yeah. like haul, hauling gear around the country on trains and and it's you know i love japan it was super fun but that's it's just i can't maintain that so this is a chance for me to reassess what all of that means you're to scheduling me. your tour scheduling as well yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and then I, I mean i i love the idea too with the you know talking about the digital space where you know if i'm playing in la obviously you got to be in la to come and see me yeah and and this is stating the absolute obvious, but I just, I love the idea that online yeah. you can see, you can see anyone from anywhere. It's what I love as a, as a fan, because I see all these DJs that I don't always have the chance to, to see. I mean, right. even you, you know, I kept, I kept missing your shows. And uh, so now I have a chance to just sit on my couch because honestly, I'm at an age where I don't necessarily want to go to the club. And I don't live at <laughs> night. I mean, <laughs> Honestly, I sometimes I just go because it's my friends. But even then, I'm like, I've seen you play. You know, I support you, but I just need my sleep because yeah, of course. You know, That's I'm real. not on the DJ schedule, <laughs> so I actually have to get up early. Um, there you go. So and it, it'll be it, it'll, it'll be interesting to see how the technology evolves too. It's like if if there's so many more performers on the internet, that's going to demand that streaming technology yeah evol evolves. Yes, it's already evolving. There's so many yeah. people that are now already looking into i'm even looking into you know some type of uh streaming platform for artists to perform mm -hmm, um mm -hmm. and actually um get some income off of that so yeah you know, it's 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 you know yeah i've worked in technology as well so i have an idea of how i would like to see it but if that's possible i don't know um, mm -hmm. um we're so heavy in this conversation i keep getting questions and then i just forget them because I'm in the conversation. Uh, I know sure. I should be better, but it's, it's, I, I find it very interesting how you go about it. Oh yeah. I was going to say, I spoke to Scheme Richards 
and mm -hmm. he had a six week uh, tour planned right now in Japan. And wow. it's, it's not every day a gig, but yeah. for uh, health purposes, if you come out of this, well, if we all come out of this and you are going to do the gigs that are now rescheduled, um, you say end of September, South Africa, let's, let's say that happens. How comfortable do you feel actually going already? Because are you also um, in charge of deciding when you want your shows to be rescheduled? Because I'm, I'm sure there's some type of contract or agreement. I mean, there, yeah, there, there is a contract or agreement, but I, I for example, with, with, with that example, if it gets close to that time and the country, South Africa is open, the promoter wants to go ahead and I'm really not comfortable going, then I'll have that conversation. Yeah. I mean, this is, it's not, this is not the kind of situation where someone's going to not understand that. Yeah, that's true. Um, but you know, if, if it comes to that time and the world is generally in a better position, if air travels resumed like normal, then I'll, I'll probably feel okay about it. Yeah. yeah. You know, I, I mean, I was, I was already in the habit of, you know, getting on a plane with, with disinfectant wipes and wiping right, down right. The, the, the tray and the screen and the armrests. And, yeah. and it's fun. I remember a few years ago seeing someone do that and thinking that's a bit extra. And now we know it's normal. You know? <laughs> yeah. And it's, it's crazy because I was already traveling with, with my face mask. Uh, right. I travel yeah. so much. I mean, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm Asian. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, in Asia, everybody. Exactly. Looks, Everyone has a face been mask. Doing it. Yeah. yeah. And so now I've, I, I, I still get weird looks even now when I go to the supermarket with my face mask because people just don't do it over here. Oh, really? I mean, yeah. he, he, here you have to. Well, it's, I don't know. It's just, I would like everybody to do it, but yeah. we have all these, these runners that are running past you with all their sweat and their breath. And I'm like, I don't want yeah, to have anything yeah, to do with that. That's a lot. You know, Amsterdam is a little crowded for, for this, it is. really. Um, and that, I, I think that's one thing we're lucky with in LA is it's right so out. much less dense. Yeah. Like yeah. everyone has space, almost everyone has a car. So you have your own little kind of travel yeah. pod. Yeah. Um, and it's, and, and people have, people from what I've seen are very, taking very seriously, are doing what they're told, they're very respectful, are watching out, watching out for each other. Yeah. I mean, that's it tripped good. me out the other day, I, I had to go to the bank. And I was like, wow, I get to wear like a bandana into a bank. <laughs> like, what is, <laughs> what is this world? I know, right? <laughs> and That's if I didn't funny. have one, they'd be looking at me funny, you know? <laughs> that is funny. Um, yeah, but I, I actually am happy that I have a car too, because it makes me at least be able to travel to see my family, um, even though, at, 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 you know, uh, we call it a meter and a half out here instead of six right. feet. Mm -hmm. um, I had lunch with her apart from her, but at least I can, you know, see her and wave at her and, and see that she's well. But I would not do that if I had to take public transportation. Oh, for real. So, I mean, yeah. I, I, I can't imagine that, like being on the tube in London yeah. or the, the subway in New York. Even it's... though it's empty, it's, it's fairly empty from the buses that I see here and the trams, mm -hmm. there, there's like one or two people in there. But yeah. still, you know, all the, the bacteria and whatever, you get very paranoid with this. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's interesting though, too, that like, you know, the, the basic understanding of how viruses get transmitted and how to keep yourself healthy, that that, that knowledge is kind of mainstream now. Yeah. It's, gr it's great. It's like, you know, we're going to have a whole, a whole generation who start washing their hands or whatever it might be, you know. Well, this, <laughs> it's funny that you say that because one of the questions that I've had in my talks is mm. we're now all aware People are very like cautious and we're, mm -hmm. we're having a new way of living. Mm -hmm. My question is always how much of that and how long are we going to maintain this, this mind state? Because people are known to fall back into their old habits when everything is sort of normal again. Um, mm. Even being uh, considerate of each other at this point, because that's really what this is about. You have to mm. really do these things to make sure everyone is safe, not just yourself. Of course, yeah. And so yeah. I would like that to be the, the, the main objective of a human being, mm -hmm. but it's a little utopic. So mm -hmm. I wonder how long it'll take for people to 
I don't want to be pessimistic, but I would wonder how long we are able to keep up with that. Let's just say it that way. For sure. Um, I mean, I, I think there'll be people who will, there'll be those of us who keep, who are forever changed. Yeah. Yeah. And there'll be, and there'll be those of us who, you know, there'll, there'll be people who don't know anyone who got sick. They don't know, any, don't know anyone who died. Yeah. The whole thing will pass and they'll be like, well, what was all the panic for? Yeah. You know, so yeah. I, th I think that I think the, the if if you're if you're far enough removed from it, it would be possible to have that kind of mentality. Um, but it's, it's going to be interesting. I mean, I, yeah. I I want I wonder if some countries are going to maintain quarantine procedures for years now. Yeah, like I wonder as well, or you know, stores, it, or yeah, it's yeah, like, like you know, New Zealand is New Zealand is far enough away from the world and a small enough population with enough control that their target is to eradicate the virus. Yeah. They're not trying to suppress it or keep the numbers they down. They're trying, actually, to, they're trying to eradicate it. They can do that, is, though. They can do there. it, but once they do it, to keep it that way until yeah. the vaccine, they're going to have to maintain a two-week quarantine for everyone coming in the country. Yeah. And that, that could be for the next couple of years or something. Yeah. That's crazy. One of, my, yeah. Uh, one of my best friends uh has been in australia for mm. four months now and she has to come back and right. she actually doesn't want to come back because it's worse over here than in australia <laughs> sure yeah but wow. so she, but yeah, she she couldn't get a um, extension and then there was something about a corona visa uh, but then she can't work there so mm -hmm, you know mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you have to come back so she actually just booked a ticket uh to come back and um but I understand her because wouldn't you rather be in New Zealand at this point? I mean, there was a point where I was thinking about that. And, and then if, about a week ago, I was thinking, you know, if, 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 it, if it went really, if it got crazy, crazy. You would jump would, on a plane now to go back. That would be the place to be. Yeah. Um, but then in reality, you got to find a plane to get there. <laughs> <laughs> well, from what I know is that in the Netherlands, our, our Royal Dutch Airlines, KLM, are still mm. flying just to get people back home. Repatriation, yeah. 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 So, for, and it, I mean, you have family in New Zealand. So, yeah. how, how is that for you? Because, honestly, I'm happy I'm close to my mom now. So, if something happens, then at least I'm here. Right. I mean, Obviously, that's always the case if you live far away from your family and your friends. Um, but uh, this is a, a specific case where people are more at risk, I guess. Yeah, I mean, I, I only have immediate family. I only have my mother left in, left in New Zealand now. Um, and, you know, she, she's elderly. She's in a, in a rest home, retirement village kind of situation. Um, and there, because she's living with a lot of elderly people, they're taking it super seriously. Yeah, you can't like, go in there. You can't because over here, all the all those you can't go there, homes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can't go in. You can't go out. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's on lockdown. They're really on lockdown. Yeah. Exactly. So you know, so we have we have we have WhatsApp, and that's about yeah. it right now. Um, yeah. But I mean, that it's a, I was, yeah, the number of times I've said to friends, and we've we've talked about like, imagine if this happened when we were kids, like when there was no internet. Yeah. You know, oh in God. in New Zealand, yeah. they were like. We were two TV stations. That was that was it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow! Well, so you it, know, when we were kids, we already played outside and we already had board games and other. We made up games. True, true. So, for me, like I even had friends that um, I have a, a, a friends couple that has kids in their house. They take care of kids, teenagers, and you know, people that are that need help right. and so they were talking about oh my gosh we're inside with these kids now how are we going to entertain them and i suggested all these board games and they're like mm -hmm. where do i get them and right so that stuff that we already know we didn't have internet we knew how to entertain ourselves as kids they, yeah but I, I i i don't know I, I don't know <laughs> if we could have done it under these circumstances like you yeah, know but like, think, like, because you, your parents, your your parents now can't be like, go outside and play. It's like, no, 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 you can't do that. But we had to play in our rooms too, without internet, without an iPad, without a for phone. A, for a month, without seeing your friends, no, I mean, without without you know. <laughs> well, maybe we could last two weeks instead of one week. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm just, I, I, it's yeah. Uh, you know, my my son is doing school on the you know 
online. That's that's amazing. Yeah. That that can be done yeah. now. We can you know, definitely not do that. And and also it's the the conversations I have with friends now are so much more intentional. Yeah. Like that's massive. Like if if someone calls me now, I, it's for a reason. You know, we, yeah. we it's, it's 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 a it's a it's, there's a quality of connection and conversation. It is. Whereas before, I think um, it was just more, you know, casual. It was casual, more ego. Yeah. Official, maybe. Maybe, um, and and it's, and it's yeah. often it's often the same people, but now it's like you know. Oh, now it's everyone. If I, if I think of <laughs> if I think of someone, I'm like, yeah, I I need to check in on them. I I need to see how they're doing. Right. You know, and 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 the question, the question, how are you? You know, that it's means different. something. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. not the opening sentence anymore, the standard default opening sentence. It's actually right. asking how somebody is. Yeah. Um, but I don't like the fact that suddenly everyone wants to video call. I'm like, first of all, I never talked to you before. Don't call me on the video. <laughs> I'm not ready for that. Like, I have to do I like that. I call. like that. I like that. <laughs> uh, yeah. It's, I mean, honestly, I do like the fact that we are more uh, aware of intentionally checking up on people mm -hmm. um but i also feel like uh it's a lot because the whole reason we, that we do have facebook and all of that is it's easy to keep up with people without having to call everybody every day and if you're still working um i love people that hit me up but i feel oftentimes guilty now because i do not have the time to have these you know, extend, extended conversations with everyone. Right. Just because they're not doing anything or their boss is paying them to do nothing. I mm -hmm. still have to, mm -hmm. you know, do a lot. And yep. so it gives me, it gives me some type of guilt that I'm not, you know, feeling the same way as them, which I do, but I can't really act but that, on but, it. But, but then, you know, the, 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 then the people who you can really connect with and invest that time in the conversations. Yeah. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, there's more value there. Yeah, that's you know, true. Because, yeah, you know, every, everyone has their priorities for sure. I mean, I'm sure some people who don't have to work all day still don't have the mental headspace to have, a, have those right. conversations. That's so, true. you know, it's, we're all dealing with it differently, and I, I get that. Um, yeah, it's just, I'm, we ne we've never experienced anything remotely close to it. So, no, this is a first, definitely. Yeah. Um, aside from people asking you, about your own music, um, are there people that hit you up t for collaborations or, you know, yeah. to, and, and is that something that you are also holding off because you're working on yourself right now, which I think is a great priority to have before diving into all these new projects. But is that something that you feel like, hey, you know, I I've always wanted to work with this person or, hey, this is a new talent. I never knew this person and they're actually great. Yeah, I mean, you know, collaboration has has been the, the at the core of everything I've right. done for for a long time, and and oftentimes it's been with someone who no one's ever heard of, or right. or or that person's audience may have never heard of me, or whatever it might be. So, um, you know, I've always been into that being about you know new people and new talent, and you know, at the moment. I have, I have one remix I'm working on at the moment for someone. Um, and then there's a couple of collaborative, like keyboard session kind of things, which I'm supposed to have done already, which are just <laughs> waiting. And so, I mean, in a way it's all, it's low priority until I feel more comfortable, I guess, right. with just this new normal. Um, but that is something I want to be doing more. And I, it's, it's a great opportunity to create more and, I mean, with that, in a way, nothing's changed. Like most of those sessions were done by remote anyway. You know, yeah. we, you know, I'd be That's doing true. them from the from the home studio and you know, dropboxing the files and whatever. Um, so none of that, none of that has changed. But there's, I think, there are definitely some friends of mine, um, and because there's some of them, I know there's more people outside of people I know. Yeah. But a lot of people who they're not playing gigs and they can record at home, and they're hungry. To, yeah. to be creative in some way do something yeah 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 so there are some things which yeah you know, i kind of have in the back of my mind and you know if i'm if this is an extended period then there's plenty of time to do that there's no rush yeah. right that's and true. 
And even if, you know, if, if, if the world starts to open up next month, the world I work in, <laughs> gigs, yeah. that's not opening up next month. No. So no matter what, this, the online kind of culture is going to be an extended experience for sure. Yeah. yeah. I do believe that as well. And also when, when the world opens up, we still have startup phases. Um, exactly. Exactly. You know, there's, yeah. it's not, oh, we're back to normal and everything no. is going the way. Even with the economy, um, mm -hmm. I know it's different in, in the United States than over here. Um, I know Trump wants to open up everything because of economy. Um, over here, we're not so much focused on that at all, uh, other than the safety of, of the society. No, exactly. Yeah. Um, but it's it, for now, we're all closed down till June 1st. Uh, we're getting right. an update tomorrow. Mm -hmm. uh, let's say June 1st, everything opens up again. There's so many people that have to now find a new way of living again, mm -hmm. because even mm -hmm. that will be a, a shift in how we Absolutely. work and how we live. Yeah. Um, it's gonna, um, it's gonna um, take a lot of us. Um, to... It really is. And then not everybody is moving at the same pace. Mm -hmm. So yep. a part of the people may still be like, oh my gosh, what's going on? Like you said, they may not want to go to events or you know festivals and other people might just want to jump back in right away. So there's going to be a really big uh, difference in, in people's mentality. Absolutely, uh, yeah. And I, I, I won't be rushing to be first in line. So right. <laughs> I'll be like, well, if, you'll you'll if let me you know when it's your, cool. <laughs> if you have your gigs, so you are actually prepared to see maybe half the people there, half the audience. Um, yeah, well, the gig won't happen if that's the expectation. Like the, the, promoter, well, the promoter can't operate like that. But he doesn't know, really. Well, then he won't put on the gig. He or she won't put on the gig, because we're talking about people who, you know, like I, I, I promote and produce shows, especially in LA. Yeah. Um, I've, I've done it all over the world, so I'm aware of that side of the, the gig as well as performing. And you know, at the end of the day, if I put on a party or a show and it loses money, yeah, then that's I'm personally paying that loss. Yeah, and the risk was always there. Now the risk is insane. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We go back to normal and some promoter puts on a show and if he's expecting a half house, then the first thing he's going to do is offer a half fee, which is... But which he is... might not do, but he might not expect it. So everything is open, everything is going, mm -hmm. society's mm -hmm. going back up, mm -hmm. you're getting your gig that's rescheduled, mm -hmm. but it still may not be a full turn up. Because people are slower. Uh, wary. People, yeah. yeah. Some yeah. people are slower in, in, in adapting to the, to the situation or more mm -hmm. scared still. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm trying to say. Like, yeah, I mean, I, I don't, I mean, I, I don't, I've played gigs to, to, you know, an empty room. Like I don't have an issue with that. Right. You know, for, for me when I'm, I mean, I, I love playing to a full room, no question okay. about it. Um, but for me when I'm playing, I'm, I'm largely, yeah, you know, I'm very self-indulgent with the process. I'm playing yeah. for myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But mostly, <clears throat> um, so that doesn't bother me so much. Um, but then, when it comes to touring, there's just a reality that you're trying to put together a string of shows. You know, the the, the economics on every single show counts. Right. And right. maybe, and maybe, maybe you know, we often talk about anchor shows. So you have you have one show which pays a bigger fee. Yeah which makes the whole tour possible and allows you to book the smaller shows around that. Yeah. yeah that, I, just, I just don't know how that can come back. Maybe half soon. and half. So when you do the live shows on mm. stage or in the venues, mm. do the live stream of the show mm -hmm. with a stream of income or fee or ticket sales through the live stream or a dollar. Yeah. dollar. It, could yeah. be, it could be incorporated next to each other no absolutely yeah 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 Might be I'm, something. It, it, it'll be interesting i think there'll be a lot of new models will come out of it yeah um and I, th I think that's that's exciting the it is the, the, i think it's exciting too because it's something that will still stand it's not a temporary solution totally. for now totally. it's going to be something yeah. that's going to be set up for for the future as well so that's yeah. why it's very interesting for for everyone involved in the mm -hmm. industry i'm not i know i know the the bigger challenge on an individual level is just people, you know, surviving until yeah. the industry's back. Yeah. 
And that's something, you know, I have a lot of compassion for people who are finding that challenging. And, yeah. and, and then, you know, I've, I've so many friends in New York and as a city that's being, you know, battered by COVID-19. Yeah. Um, I, just, I just can't imagine that, like having, having that around you as well as the economic uncertainty yeah. is, that's a lot. I mean, I, 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 I have a lot of compassion for people's mental health. You know, I think that's a, a really big thing. People yeah. who may not, you know, especially, and this isn't in every industry, so I'm, I'm not only talking about musicians, but right. musicians are a great example where oftentimes a lot of us will travel away from our home country or hometown to go to some, some place that we've always wanted to be like New York or London yeah. or Berlin or LA and, and so a lot, of, a lot of people are away from family support structures. You know, the, the, our, our community structures are largely made up of each other. So everyone's, yeah. in, the, everyone's in the same boat. Um, and, you know, I feel fortunate that I'm, I'm, I'm able to be, you know, mentally fairly stable. Yeah. And, you know, I, I feel in a good place. And, and I'm okay, you know, I'm... I'm I was able to have some savings and be okay for for, for a minute. Yeah, you don't have but that pressure. Yeah, I don't. I mean, at the same time, you know, the clock's ticking. It's like there's every time I, you know, spend money, there's yeah. money going out and none coming in. So right. I get that. But, don't spend um, money. Stay in the house. Yeah. <laughs> don't yeah, buy I just, online. <laughs> I, I know. I know it's really tough for some people, and so I, I do have a lot of compassion for that. I, yeah. I, I hope that, you know, people are. Everyone's able to be resilient and resourceful. Um, and, you know, some places there are cities and countries giving a lot of great support to creatives. Yeah. Um, I heard in Berlin, everyone got 5,000 euros. Well, my friend in Germany, he's a uh, stand up comedian. He got yeah. 9,000 euros. That's fantastic. Months. And his, his roommate, who also is a stand up comedian but has his own little company next to that got 14,000 euros and I'm sitting here Germany is like an hour and a half for me like <laughs> I should have registered in Germany with my company it's <laughs> like, it's like self. some people some people are making more money by from this than they would otherwise <laughs> like, I, was thinking this, I was like that's a whole investment for me like can I get some of that I mean honestly I have you know in in the Netherlands we have a um support structure now set up for three months uh -huh. uh, my application is still um in 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 a wait of of getting it or not mm -hmm. but they actually sent me a letter that i got a thousand euros while i'm waiting for the month month of march great now yeah a thousand euros is, is not even half of what i lost but I'm sure. not complaining. Definitely not complaining because I'm okay. I have low rent. I live very simple and minimalistic. So I'm, I'm okay with that. Um, nice. Yeah. So yeah, it, it all helps, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then also what I'm really happy about is I live, like I said, I live a very simple life. I don't have a big house. I don't have a big car. And it mm -hmm. actually benefits me being self-employed. Yeah. Um, because I don't know when my next project or my next paycheck is coming. So I'm, I'm okay with that. Uh, yeah. I know that Instagram is going to cut us off um, at an hour. We're actually been talking for almost an hour. Um, is there anything uh, that you want to say to the people that do have it, have a tough time right now? Um, uh, is there anything motivating that you want to give out? I mean, I, I, I don't know what the answers are. <laughs> all, I, all I know is that for myself is that creating some kind of structural routine to start my days has helped me a lot. Um, you know, eating well. Yeah. Learning, new, re learning new recipes. <laughs> um, but yeah, looking after my mental, physical, and spiritual condition on a fundamental level gives me a chance to find some kind of normal within all this. Yeah. Um, so I know that works for me. And like this morning, I didn't want to do any of the morning routine, but I, I forced myself to it. Yeah. It was great. Very it was good. great. You know, so I think, you know, forming, for me, forming those kind of baseline habits has been really, really, really good. Um, and I, I know, I know with, you know, the hardships of sickness or people dying or, you know, not, 
not knowing how to pay for the groceries. Like there's there are a lot of levels of hardship. Um, and so I don't want to belittle any of that because I know it's, it's yeah. super hard for people. But I think if we can, you know, at least do the bare minimum to look after our mental state, yeah. then, then we have a chance. I think so too. Yeah. And um, what I want to add to that is if people are, you know, having a hard time staying positive, surround yourself with people that, you know, make you feel loved. And Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Play music that you love that makes Check you Check in with perfect. music you love. Yes. yes. <laughs> um, because, I mean, that's Absolutely. stuff that, you know, for me, you know, I, I've lived a life, I've been depressed. So I've, I've learned ways to make sure that I'm mentally okay. Mm -hmm. And yep. that is applicable to this time, especially. So yeah, uh, look up somebody. And also what very, very much helps is helping someone else. Absolutely. Um, if you Absolutely. feel bad and you help someone else, it'll make you feel good too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it's something that I've been doing the past few weeks, helping people that need help. And no, I love it, that. And not yeah. because I'm such a saint, but it actually helps me. <laughs> no, totally. It gives, it gives you perspective. And, yeah. You know, it helps our compassion. Definitely. Absolutely. So thank you so much for this conversation. It was very, very positive and uplifting. And I, I, it was great to hear that you're actually looking out for yourself first, other than just everybody pushing for music. Well, wait, you know what my, what my friend said? It's, wait. It's, and secure your own oxygen mask before others. <laughs> That's Very a, good. It, it has not been more applicable to any situation <laughs> than now. So, yeah. That's the bottom line. Yes. Yeah. Um, well, again, thank you so much. I do hope to see you uh, live in person sometime sooner than later. For sure. Um, if not, For sure. I'll be tuning in to your live streams. <laughs> we got a stream at the end of the month. We got um, doing a four day festival event with. Kareem Riggins on the 27th. I saw that. I saw that. myself and Spinner. Said, yeah, there's a lot of people that I so, want to um, see. So I, yeah. I, I'll look up the dates so and tune in. probably have to set my alarm, but. <laughs> you can do it. <laughs> yeah, I can do it. I, I can get out of my routine for you. <laughs> but yeah, thanks cool. again. And um, Thank you. stay healthy. Stay you safe. You too. Yeah. And i um, looking forward to seeing more from you. All right, then. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Take guys, care. for tuning in. Everybody yeah. wash your hands and stay safe. Bye. Peace.